Welcome back to the how to through hike series we've been doing. Today we're going to talk about how to get a lighter backpacking kit and I actually made 10 tips to help you achieve this. Obviously not every single person out there wants a lighter backpack or cares to have a lighter backpack so why should you? Well to start a lighter backpack is easier to carry since whatever you bring on your hiking trip you then have to haul up mountains for miles and miles on end. It's more comfortable on your shoulders and joints and your muscles carrying the less weight. It allows you to do more and see more since you can walk more freely without the pain or the stress of a heavy backpack. And in many ways, it helps to avoid potential injuries that you might see with folks toting a heavier load. I personally have done all of my through hikes with a six pound base weight or a six pound backpack, sometimes even less than that. So although I really enjoy traveling super light now with a really minimal kit, I didn't always. And actually in 2012 on my first Appalachian Trail attempt, I was actually carrying a backpack upwards of 70 pounds. As you can imagine, I had a ton of fun, but I also found myself in a lot of pain. And this pain soon became the reason that I had to quit and get off the trail so early on into my hike. And I think this is kind of one of the reasons why I've since gone so light on all of my trips. It is the prospect of getting injured in a way that I feel can be easily prevented. Prevented before I've even left for the trip. So in 2016, when I came back to hike the Appalachian Trail again, I had a super light backpack and I walked every single day comfortably and happy and really enjoyed every single moment of that trail. You don't have to go anywhere near as light as I do, but I do think it's good to be aware of what you're carrying and how much you're carrying and how heavy the things that you're carrying are. So as you're going on your shakedown overnight hikes near home, this is stuff that I would like you to consider. A through hike upwards of 2,000 miles is much more than a camping trip. And in reality, it's a lot more like a walking trip. Few through hikes out there, at least the really long ones, could you average 10 miles a day and still complete them. And that is because of the weather. So we hike. We hike uh, day in and day out, all in efforts of trying to race the weather north or south. All of this would be made much more difficult with a heavy backpack. So these days, most aim for a more ultralight system while through hiking. Something that they can carry more comfortably while on their walking trip. So here are 10 tips from my point of view. So tip number one, use what you have. Start with the gear you already own. I know it's tempting to go out and buy new things, but the best way to learn and grow is to simply get out there and try things. This way you can get a better idea for what you really want when later on if you do so choose to go out and buy some new stuff. When you do go out with your gear, try and take notes on what you would like to be different. Maybe there is a different shaped tent that you would prefer or maybe your sleeping bag isn't warm enough for instance. Tip number two, take out everything you have, weigh it, and write it all down. Preferably using a website like lighterpack.com and a little kitchen scale. It's one thing to go out backpacking and know that your kit feels heavy. It's another thing to know exactly where all that weight is coming from. So with websites like Lighter Pack, you can move things around and remove things and weigh different things and see how this changes your list overall. See how this changes your overall base weight. Categorizing things in this way allows you to scrutinize your gear further. And oftentimes for free, you can lighten your backpacking load. Tip number three, every time you go out, reevaluate the gear that you brought. So you've got a day here or a day there that you can take off from work, maybe a weekend or a couple days in a row, and you can do a short little overnight trip. Take as many of these as possible, and every time you come home, think over your trip, and again, reevaluate the things that you brought, and do this over and over and over. The only way you'll figure any of this stuff out is by doing. Before hiking the Appalachian Trail in 2016, I had already done about 2,000 miles worth of these little tiny overnight trips. I learned more on those little tiny trips than I ever have on any through hike I've done since. Tip number four, 
Make a distinction between what is actually necessary for your survival and comfort and what is purely a luxury item. Then decide if that luxury is something that you would even use. Oftentimes you get out there and you realize at the end of the day you're a lot more tired than you thought you would be and maybe you're not really going to read that book that you brought. Or like me on the Florida Trail where I carried a fishing pole for 1,100 miles and only used it once. Try and remember while doing this that through hikes are much more of a walking trip than anything else. And it's good to make this distinction so you know exactly what you can leave behind and not truly suffer for it. Now this doesn't only apply to books or fishing rods, this applies to everything in your pack. If it isn't purely for your survival, then at least for this thought exercise, let's consider it a luxury and that it could be left behind without much consequence. Tip number five, modify everything. This is pretty common when trying to push the limits of what you carry, to go through all of your things and see if you can modify them in any way to be lighter. Are there any unnecessary features that you could possibly cut off? You've probably already seen or heard about people cutting their toothbrushes in half, and that's kind of the idea here. Do you really need a full handle toothbrush to brush your teeth, or could you do it with a shorter one? Same goes for anything else. Do you really need all those extra straps that are attached to your backpack, or do you think you could cut them off? You're not gonna be saving pounds at a time by cutting these things off, but every little bit counts. Removing a half an ounce here or an ounce there before you know it, you've done that enough and you've removed an entire pound from your backpack. This is awesome to do because, again, it's totally free and you're actively making the gear you already own lighter in the process. Tip number six, find the value in the absolute bare minimum and then add back things from there. When people ask me for a shakedown, I make a point to show them what the bare minimum is with the gear they have the least amount of items that they need to survive, or rather the most important items in their entire backpack. And then everything else that I've taken out from there, I let them add back in what they truly want. I do this because I think it's very important to know just how little you could get away with, and also to hopefully help make that distinction between luxury and survival. So that's what I'm gonna ask you to do, to try and make that distinction and to find the bare minimum of the gear that you own. To make two separate piles, the most important items you have and then other items that you just really enjoy. And then to go through that pile of items that you enjoy but don't truly necessarily need and add back items from it. You know, the stuff that you really love and the stuff that's really gonna make your trip a lot more fun or more comfortable. Tip number seven campsite selection. Good campsite selection means you can get away with a lot less gear by replacing that gear with knowledge and skills. For instance, you can get away with a much lighter tent if your campsite is really good or that maybe you know the trail you're hiking has a lot of vegetation to shield you, thus saving a lot of weight with a more minimal shelter. The same goes for warmth. If you're constantly setting up in really exposed areas or near water or at the tops of mountains, then you would need a lot more insulation than someone who is being a little bit more choosy about where they're setting up. This is one of the biggest ways that I've been able to go so light on all of my hikes. I am extremely choosy about where I set up my tarp, where I set up my camp. If other people are gonna sleep in a really poor campsite, I'm probably gonna go further. I'm gonna look for something nicer. So what you wanna look for are areas that are naturally sheltered from wind. Like maybe you have a rock wall or maybe you have a bunch of trees or a bunch of bushes surrounding you to kind of block wind. I know it's tempting to camp near water because water is generally very pretty and a serene campsite, but areas that are close to water are almost always colder. So you wanna camp away from those water sources. You wanna find an area to camp that has nice tree cover. Having a thick layer of trees and branches above you or maybe just a really thick bush above you can actually help prevent condensation on your tarp or tent 
You don't want to camp on the tops of exposed mountains as generally that's very windy and cold and also you don't want to camp in the bottom of valleys since that's also pretty cold. So I generally look for somewhere right in the middle. Doing all of this whenever possible and you'll be amazed at how little you can carry and still remain totally comfortable. You don't need to do each and every one of these things every single day. Just try and be choosy, be picky about what type of weather you're experiencing and how you should deal with that. Is it a really windy day? Then find some shelter from the wind. Tip number eight, use others as inspiration for your own gear choices. This is something that I do constantly. Searching online for others that have been successful on their through hikes and comparing their gear choices to my own or taking notes on the types of things that they used and how that might be helpful to me. Is there some special reason that they chose what they did instead of something else? And of course, is this a person that has highly scrutinized their own gear choices that I can actually trust with my own? Looking for ways that I can lighten my own kit with theirs as inspiration. Don't just do this with one person, do this with many people to get a varied perspective on what works. This I find is an incredible way to learn whether you're a beginner or an expert. Though you can look at any gear list ever in existence for this type of inspiration, it is helpful to look at someone who has hiked the trail that you're going to hike and looking at their gear that they used on that specific trail. As things like warmth or the shelter they used or the water capacity that they had can vary wildly from trail to trail. Tip number nine, spending money. Let's say that you really love backpacking and that maybe you're looking to spend a little bit of money. Maybe you're wanting to make a investment to many hiking trips in the future. The biggest area that you can save weight by spending money is generally by replacing your big three. Your big three would be your shelter, your backpack, and your quilt or sleeping bag. These things will undoubtedly cost you and you may not need to spend that money with all these other free tips out there, but you can almost certainly shed a lot of weight by replacing these things instead of just purely becoming a minimalist, like in a lot of ways I have. As you lighten your pack further, you're then able to use lighter and lighter gear that is meant to carry less. I think the backpack is really the best example of this. As you're lightening all the rest of your gear up significantly and carrying less, then you can buy a lighter weight backpack. You don't need that giant frame anymore. You can get away with something much smaller. So these three places, your shelter, your backpack, and your quilt are where the biggest weight savings can come from by spending money. And tip number 10, the last tip here, is don't pack your fears. Research, plan, and understand how you can overcome your fears. A game I would play with my mom was using her fears of what I would run into on a through hike and how I would deal with it to my own learning advantage. I'd ask her what she was afraid of happening to me, as there was certainly always something, and then I would explain to the best of my ability why that wasn't going to be a problem. If you can't explain it to her or don't know yourself, then it's a topic you need to research and learn more about. The fears you have and the fears your friends or family may have can sometimes be very valid and real. And that is why we play this game, to learn and find new things to prepare for, to find new things to learn about. Really, that is why we do any of this. That is why we do all this research, all this planning. Having an ultralight kit isn't about just bringing the bare minimum. It's really about being extra prepared and knowing the conditions you're gonna face to a very high degree. Having experience with your gear and going out on those short little trips so that you know that you are prepared. The more you understand your fear, the less frightening it becomes and instead it turns into a strength. Remember, it may seem silly to save an ounce here or an ounce there or even to save fractions of an ounce, but you do that enough and you've suddenly shaved a pound off of your back or multiple pounds off of your back. And I've got one last little bonus tip here, and that is the biggest area that I see people carrying too much 
is clothing. It is, I imagine, the fear of being cold, or for a lot of people, the fear of being dirty, or maybe not knowing what will be warm enough. Studying what others have done before you, or possibly using your own experiences out on these short little trips you're taking is really important here. So those are my 10 tips and a quick little bonus one. Let me know in the comments below what you think or if you have any further advice for other people who are trying to lighten their backpack. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. We are still really just getting into the How to Through Hike series. So if you have some big hiking plans on the future, then be sure to subscribe and check back here often for new videos. That's all I have for you today. I hope to see you in the next episode where we'll be diving deeper into gear and other things you should be doing to prepare for your long walk in the woods. So I'll see you then. Thank you guys so much for watching.